what up plays this is Matt here on just for fun uh, please like us on facebook.com slash JFFLQ um, that stands for just for fun and the limited Q who is our partner Russell shout out Russell um, this deck is budget Tron um, this is a great uh, experiment right so we took red green Tron and we took out you know 99% of the expensive cards not mana expensive but money expensive and um, made our own version of it Tron lands cost nothing they're commons um, so what did we take out we took out if you look at a popular um, red green Tron list they run for a grove of the burn willows they run four Karn, usually, and um, uh, Worm Coil Engine, um, Oblivion Stone. So Oblivion Stone is like 30 tickets right now. Karn is probably around the same. Um, Bur Grove is around the same, if not more. Um, so that's already like 400 tickets. Um, the worm coils are pretty high too. I think they're around 18, something like that. Um, so what we did was we took all that stuff out and we, we went to see if the deck could still function pretty much the same, um, if not in some ways better uh, without all that dreck clogging it up. So here's what we came up with. Um, so let's, sh let's first talk about what's the same. So the Tron lands are the same. Uh, a couple ghost quarters um, just for value uh, Eye of Ugin that's all the same um, where we differ in the lands is we've thrown in one Academy Ruins um, and I'll get to that that obviously is not a card in red green Tron but in our deck we can play whatever colors we want um, so this becomes a sick combo with Mind Slaver so if you have enough mana, uh, which is 12, you can mind, cast Mind Slaver, sack it, and put it back on top of your library uh, all in the same turn so you can take all of, literally, actually all of the turns. So it's a cruel, mean, horrible win condition. Uh, this is a card that I hate. I uh, played against it in Legendary Cube. You can watch that video and you'll see how mad I got playing against this card it, it just makes me hate life so um you know, i want to inflict that pain upon someone else maybe maybe i'm a sadistic prick i don't know maybe i just wanted it in the deck for for funsies um so uh, i've yet to actually pull that recurring thing off because uh the bright side is, the good reason for that is that i'm actually killing everybody before that becomes a thing um now uh, Shimmering Grotto and Unknown Shores. Now there's three of these and one of these for no good reason. It's, they're functionally the same. It's just what I happen to have in my collection already. Um, these are you know, prism lands, filter lands, whatever you want to call them. Um, we have plenty of colorless mana floating around. Um, and since they add one colorless, they don't affect your, um, your curve, really. I mean... They sort of slow your curve one if you're trying to filter to play uh, a, a colored spell, but there aren't that many in the deck, and you know having the ability when you need it is very clutch. And this opens up you, you know, if you want to play other s crazy sideboard cards to splash anything like that, you can. Um, so uh, as far as other color, f you know, fixing and whatever else. Um, the spheres and the stars serve a similar purpose in that they're fixing um, for a low cost, like a small tempo cost, that you easily make up when you complete the Tron and have ridiculous amounts of mana in play. Um, they add a lot of consistency to your deck because not only are they fixing you, they're drawing you one card closer and they're letting you cast Ancient Stirrings or Sylvan Scrying to find whatever Tron piece you're missing. So. Um, scrying and map are obvious inclusions to complete your Tron. Um, Relic just randomly hoses people sometimes and also cantrips to add the consistency 
and Stirrings plays a dual role. This is actually, uh, you know, a very interesting card because it lets you either fix for a Tron piece or pull up a threat once you've completed Tron and you need another threat. So Ancient Stirrings does a lot of work for one mana. Um, and then we have our uh, column, this column with the six on top is our board control. We've got three uh, pyroclasms, which is just a way to um, keep early threats off the board, um, destroy tokens, you know, punish people for going wide, um, kill elves, kill mana dorks, you know, slow your opponent down. Basically, this is play. This is a wrath. That's a tempo play for cheap. Um, mana cost easily fixed as we described earlier um, that helps us live to the late game all is dust is our stand-in for oblivion stone um, so yeah the groves and shores are there instead of the burn willows um, I mean the grotto and the shores all is dust is there doing the same job as oblivion stone and I'm not all that convinced that oblivion stone is better than all this dust. I mean, you generally don't want to cast Oblivion Stone unless you're going to activate it in the same turn, because then you run the risk of losing it. Plus, opponent then knows what's up and he's going to play around it. This is much, much harder to play around. Um, and because it, it only hits the colored permanents, you can cast this with an Eldrazi in play, and it does not affect you at all. So I think this uh, it's a matter of taste and i understand the counterpoint but in my opinion i think this is an improvement um conduit of ruin okay is our engine card in this deck and i gotta tell you this card is overperformed beyond all expectations so what it's doing for you here is um it allows you on six or sometimes four <laughs> to search up um you know a colorless creature and then it not only does it do that but it ramps you to for the next turn um, for casting that creature um, so let's say you're hitting your land drop and this uh, with Tron out you're gonna ramp yourself four or five in a turn and guarantee that you're drawing a bomb it's it's insane it's so good um, plus it's a five five so it does a really decent job of either stabilizing you or you know um, bring in the beats in the meantime um, till you get your big threat online um, speaking of the big threats so um, we talked about mind slaver combo with uh, Academy ruins um, now is here are some of our big threats we got desolation twin um, when you know opponents on an empty board and you don't have enough mana for Ugin or Emrakul you play this and it's possible you can swing for 20 and just kill them um, Ulamog uh, lets you blow up one problem thing and have a Tenton and Destructible in play it's pretty pretty hard to deal with and you know having Conduit of Ruin makes um, Ulamog safer play against a deck that might have a Edict or you know um, because you can just sack the conduit instead and get to keep your Ulamog, um, keeps that alive. Pretty powerful. Um, by the way, Ulamog has come way down in price with the advent of Modern Masters 2015, um, plus the new Ulamog being arguably better, if, you know, on par, if not better, and standard legal makes this one cost a lot less, so, um, giant spaghetti monster doing what it does if you have enough mana to cast this you're gonna win it's like one of the hardest things to beat in magic it it's the top end in many many a deck for all the right reasons and they're not that expensive now i think i picked this up for less than four tickets and you really you only need maybe two at the most um, I mean, there are, there might be some legacy decks that play more than that, but really, honestly, two is probably fine. It's a good investment. Um, you know, it might not be. It, since it was just reprinted, it's pretty unlikely to get reprinted for a while. I would definitely pick these up. Um, now, uh, Ugin. Uh, now, again, I know Ugin's pretty expensive in terms of tickets. It's maybe like nine. I picked mine up for nine a piece, but again, you're only ever going to need two. You will never have four of these in the deck, and it's so good. It's standard legal. Um, 
I think it's it just it's just so amazing. It's worth it. It's worth it. Um, so this. You, uh, you know, obviously you put it into play, you can uh, wrath your opponent's board, get rid of, clean up the whole mess, stabilize, or, um, you know, just start pinging them for three. Um, because of, uh, you know, playing something like All is Dust into Ugin or whatever, or just playing Ugin on a blank board, it's pretty easy to get it to ultimate. You know, let's say opponent, ha you know, you're casting this turn four most likely. So turn four, opponent might have, I don't know, a 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> um, you know, you, you play this, you bolt that, you're up at nine loyalty. It's going to be really hard for them to keep you off of ultimating. And if you're putting seven permanents into play, and one of them is, say, Emrakul or Desolation Twin, I mean, the odds of losing at that point are very, very slim. Uh, last little cute thing here we have is Platinum Angel. Although not an Eldrazi, you can search for this with Conduit of Ruin. Um, and you can search... Can you search for it with I? No, you can't search for it with... Oh, yes, you can. You can search for it with both of those. Um, if you're playing against a deck that you know has no removal or no way to would be, uh, get rid of this, you know, it can keep you alive long enough to win, which you'll see in the videos. Um, also goes really really well with Spellskite to protect it um, so this is another cute combo Spellskite is also just pretty good in this deck because you're trying to win with one big fat dude um, and Spellskite is there to protect you um, sideboard is not a fully realized sideboard so I'm not really going to talk about it but this is just you know potential um, some some kind of cards that you might find interesting uh, Ancient Grudge uh, against Affinity, perhaps. Leyline against Burn. And you can actually cast all of these cards because your mana doesn't matter. Wear Terror, powerful card. Sun Droplet, great against Aggro and Burn and, and tokens and shit like that. Uh, Not of This World was a card I wanted to try um, as like a force of will. But it just seems so win more, and honestly, there's better ways to protect it. Now, I know Spellskite's expensive too. This is not necessary. You could play something else in this slot. Um, yeah, let me just address that real quick. Yeah, so this is probably, I don't know, 17 tickets, something like that, uh, last time I checked. But you, um, again, you don't really need to play this. Uh, you can play something else in that spot, and it'll still probably fine, be fine. Play another threat, even whatever. Anyway, um, even maybe main deck one of the Sun Droplets is probably a, a good idea too. Um, really like the deck. Um, think it's a lot of fun. You get to really cheat on lands, uh, which I like, and have a lot of cards and a lot of decisions and just go over the top of everything. Um, I, I enjoyed playing. I hope you enjoy the videos. Good night.